In this video, we're going to be performing a little test using this 120 volt, 60 watt incandescent lamp. Years ago, a device was sold. It was one of those green devices to save on electricity. It looked like a CR2016 or 2032 button cell battery, the three volt batteries. And it was designed to go inside the socket and then you would screw the bulb into the socket. And the claim was that by using direct current over alternating current, the filament and the bulb itself, the glass envelope, would be operating at much cooler temperatures. So what I want to do in this video is we're going to perform a little test. We're going to measure the temperature of this 60 watt incandescent lamp using the thermocouple on my digital multimeter. We're going to see what the maximum temperature is of the glass envelope after 10 minutes of leaving the light turned on using 120 volts AC. We're going to also measure the voltage of the AC mains because we're going to have to make sure we have a DC supply that's going to be very close to that voltage. First thing I'm going to do is place a thermocouple on top of the light bulb and then I'm going to plug it into the AC receptacle. We're going to turn this on and I'm going to wait 10 minutes and give you a temperature reading and then we're going to take a look at the voltage at the connection to the socket. Here we go. Okay, we seem to have stabilized right around, you can see it now, 372 to 374 degrees Fahrenheit, right on top of that glass envelope. So now I'm going to give you a voltage reading right over here for the AC mains. Then we're going to repeat the experiment using DC. Now when we rectify this, we're going to be using a full wave rectifier and then we're going to smooth the output using a capacitor. If you only use a 1N4007 1 amp rectifier diode, then you're only going to have about half the voltage because you're going to be using half the AC waveform. So let me just connect this up to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, here we go. Let me switch this to DC voltage. And let me power it back up. All right, you can see it's about half as bright. Take a voltage reading, 54.15 volts DC. Now something like this would actually be very good if you wanted a way to have a low and high control for a lamp without generating a lot of heat. So if you have it in a high position, it would bypass the diode. And when you have it in the low position, current will flow through the diode, only allowing half of the waveform, the positive peaks, to power the bulb. And in the process, you're only going to have a lamp that's half as bright. This one amp diode could be used up to 120 watts. 120 watts divided by 120 volts gives you one amp. If you had a 250 volt light, then you'd have to use at least a two amp rectifier diode. Now I'm going to connect this up using a full wave rectifier. All right, we have the alternating inputs, the two in the center, then we have the DC output. The white is the positive and the black is the negative. Let me turn it on, give you a voltage reading without the filter capacitor in place. Let's take a voltage reading. Block the light so you can see it. And we're right around 108. There are some losses in the conversion because this is not a shot key diode full wave rectifier. Now I'm going to take this electrolytic capacitor, 250 volt, 100 microfarads, and connect it across the output and what that's going to do, it's going to smooth out the AC ripples, make it a nice smooth DC output. As a result of using the filter capacitor, 
the DC voltage is going to become around 1.4 times the AC voltage input. So the AC voltage input is around 121.5 volts, so it's going to cause the voltage to rise much higher. Let me connect this up and show you. All right, and as you saw, the current flowed into that capacitor when I made the connection, and the bulb is very, very bright now. This bulb is actually on its way out. You can see when the filament powered up before, a cloud came up off of it, so the life is nearing the end. And we're right around 151. So now we have a smooth DC output, but the only problem is we have around 151 volts going into that bulb. So clearly it's going to be burning hotter as a result of the higher voltage. So what I need to do is keep the output nice and smooth, but get the voltage down so it's right around the same as the AC voltage. Once I do that, then what I'm going to do is put the thermocouple back in and we're going to take another temperature reading. At that point, we'll know if operating the bulb using direct current causes the bulb to run cooler. Okay, let me make a couple of changes, come back and show you what I did to get the voltage down to around 121, 122. Okay, what I had to do, I took the AC hotline and I connected it to an oil-filled capacitor. This is a 60 microfarad run capacitor. These two terminals give you 60, and if you go between the common and this terminal, it gives you 5 microfarad. So this is going to keep the current down, which in turn will keep the voltage of the bulb lower. Also, by using this capacitor, I won't have any heat like using a resistor. To get the voltage exactly where I needed it, on the neutral side of the AC line, I added a couple ceramic resistors right here. And the two of these together is right around 7 ohms. It does not get hot. It lowers the voltage just enough to give me the output which is very close to the AC input of around 122 volts. Let me turn this on give you a voltage reading at the bulb. And that's very, very good. That was 121.4, and the AC voltage was right around 121.6. Now that we know the DC voltage is the same as the AC voltage, now I'm going to connect up the thermocouple, position it on top of the bulb, and take a temperature reading. Alright, it's all connected up. You can see it's detecting the heat from when the bulb was on. Before, with AC voltage, we had right around 372 to 374 degrees Fahrenheit. Let me turn it on and see how high it goes. And as you can see, it's right around the same as the AC current. So if anybody ever tells you that DC current will make a bulb run cooler, you can just refer them to this video to prove to them that they're wrong. Using DC will not cause an incandescent lamp or more than likely a halogen to run any cooler. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlists as well. Thank you very much for watching.